one to two months away from your exam, things can become pretty stressful. You can even be a little excited, but mostly stressful or worried, or you just can't wait to get it over with. Pass or fail, you just want to get it over with. This exam, all this studying, the Cybex, the practice questions, the Eric Conrad, whatever, it's taken up too much of your life. It's taken up, it's consumed your your, your time with your family, your, your professional life, work, uh, business, social, your friends. It's taken up way too much time away from this. Time to, you just want it to end. You're hoping for the pass. Uh, if you fail, you pick it up and do it again. Maybe not, but you just you just want this thing to end. I remember that I had to pass. There was no choice for me. First of all, I studied for one year straight, straight one year. I, I, I didn't hang out with my friends. I didn't I didn't spend I didn't get to spend a lot of time with my family. I really just missed out on a lot. Uh, TV shows, football games, hanging out, going to get a few drinks with my uh, a couple of my buddies. Uh, Game of Thrones. I've never seen a single episode of Game of Thrones. I don't even know what it is. Uh, as, as a, at that time, I was studying so hard, I just don't want to get into it. I don't want to get into any TV shows and watch entire seasons. I have no idea what Game of Thrones is. Um, plus, this was a time when the CSP exam was about to change back in April 2015. And that was going to change a month after my exam date. So there was no way I was going to fail that exam and then come back and study the material all over again and also study the new stuff along with that. There's just no way I'm doing that. I just had to pass the first time. No options, no excuses, no choice. I had to pass, which I did the first time. And to tell you a secret, it's not that difficult, guys. If you really study everything that you need to, the books, the, the PDF notes, the sunflower notes, writing your own notes, doing a bunch of practice questions, the exam isn't that bad at all. Whatever study guide book you're using, make sure to read it all thoroughly, every single page. Don't skip any pages and definitely don't even think about skipping a, over an entire domain. If you read every single page in your Cybex or Sean Harris, the exam is just not that bad. You can pass it. All you have to do is just stay at it every single day. Study something CIS related every single day. But if you fail it, at least you won't be failing it horribly if you study. You'll know where you need to fine tune your concepts and sharpen which areas. But given that, I think you're going to pass and I wish you the best. This is, it's, the ISC squared has created some exam here, huh? I mean, you got to take the exam. It used to be six hours. It's now three hours. It's mind bending questions. You need the cert to improve your professional life, to get a job, to show that you're serious about security. You, sometimes your employer might require it. They suddenly require you as an adult, you know, over 30, under 30, to take this giant exam, which you probably haven't taken something like this since college. It's, it's, it's really, what it is, is really an inconvenience, the CISP exam. But I'm telling you, if, if you get it, you're better off with it than without it, especially if you're in security and you take it seriously. But if you're still not at that point yet, being one to two months away from the exam, these following practices are still good to keep in mind for when you are a few months away, for when you, it's your turn to take this exam. These are the four kind of techniques I used about three or four months before I took my exam, and it worked for me. I, every, every single thing I studied and went over and, and rehearsed, it, it came through for me when I actually sat down and took the 250-question exam. These techniques are, the first one is, there should be nothing new left for you to learn one to two months away from the CS CSP exam. And I'll go into that in detail later. Second one is to review your PDF notes and mind maps and also your handwritten notes. And the other one is to take a lot of practice questions. And I mean a lot. I'm talking in the, in the thousands, in the deep thousands. And, there are just some, and the last one, there are just certain topics you just have to know about. And I'll go over those near the end of this video. Okay, let's go over the first point, which is nothing should be new. If you're one to two months away from the exam, at this point you should know everything. As in, if you, know, if you open up any of your CISB study guides, the Cybex, Sean, Conrad, or whoever wrote the official one from the ISC squared, that, that green book, if you open up a page from any of those books and just point to a topic, it shouldn't seem like a completely new concept at this point. Not if you're one to two months away from the exam. Three to four months away, maybe. Five to six, six months away, then absolutely, you're allowed to be unfamiliar with some of the material. Like if I flip through, let's see if I can use a demonstration here. If I flip through this, this is the Sean Harris 7th edition book um, on Domain 4. Let me see if I flip through. I'm going to flip through a bunch of pages. My exam is one to two months away, and I just happen to land on, say, DNS resolution components. 
Man, that's a tough one. Um, well, anyway, at this point, one to two months away, I shouldn't be looking at DNS resolution components and saying, what in the world is DNS resolution components? The reaction should more be like, hmm, let's see. What what DNS essentially does, I just, just spit out everything you know about the topic. Even if you don't know what exactly DNS resolution components means, try to break it down. What DNS essentially does is allow us to type in www.studynosintheory.com whenever we want to go to that website instead of having to type the IP address every single time. I mean, who, I mean, think about it. Of all the web pages and, and sites that you go to every day, wouldn't it be a bother and a pain to have to remember the IP addresses for all of them? That'd be a pain. That's what, and, and DNS helps to translate those domain names, so you don't have to remember IP addresses. It's easier to remember studynosintheory.com instead of 34233.12.25. DNS is a way to translate domain names, meaning websites, to their actual IP address. Each website can have a fixed IP address or a revolving dynamic IP address. Either way, website names have an associated IP address, and DNS helps to resolve them through queries. That's all I know about DNS. Now to focus in on DNS resolution components, so if I'm a month away from my exam and I know the basic concept of DNS like I just explained to myself, then I'm probably going to be okay for the exam. But just by looking at the term DNS resolution components, I can probably guess that it probably has something to do with the request response process works between a client and a server when it comes to DNS resolution. And in my opinion, that's all I really need to know for the exam. Nothing too deep, just the basic characteristics. Okay, If we go back to our slide, we can see some other concepts going on here. If you flip to a page, let me zoom in. I think you guys can see, whoops, too zoom, too much, too much. If you flip to a page in your in your study guide book and you come to IPsec, okay, the, the, the top of the page is already going to show domain four, network security. But you should almost you should know that IPsec belongs in the network security domain in the network security uh, chapters. It doesn't belong in software development security. It doesn't belong in security and risk management domain one. It's domain four. It has to do with data and motion. IPsec can be used with VPNs, virtual private networks. It deals with confidentiality. It deals with integrity, deals with AH, authentication header, deals with ESP, en encapsulating security payload. These terms, AH, ESP, Ike, Internet Key Exchange, and ISACAMP, these terms should pop out at you as being associated with IPsec. Just like if you look at uh, flip to domain one and you see Bell Lapadula, you don't have to know it's from domain one. You know what? Forget what I said. You don't have to know what domain it is. That's probably just me being very... Uh, precise. But know, at least know that Bell Lapadula deals with confidentiality. It has things like a simple security rule, a star property rule, a strong star property, and that is part of manda mandatory access control. Bell Lapadula and mandatory access control are related, but an important, important side note, they're not exclusive. They don't have to go together. They both preserve confidentiality. Next term is fuzzing. If you if you th see the word fuzzing, and if you flip to one of your books, and you, that's the one you land on, the, it should be, it, well, to me, it, it's clear that it belongs in Domain 8, Software Development Security, because it has to do with software development. But it also deals with integrity, availability, and confidentiality. It discovers flaws. It confirms input validation. It sends random data to a target computer to test to see if it's vulnerable to certain types of uh, attack, maybe like SQL injection or something like that. Okay, you just, just look at a term and try to associate as many terms with it, the subterms or the subdefinitions associated with it. Like hot site. What does hot site uphold of the CIA? Confidentiality, integrity, availability. Definitely availability, right? It has to do with business continuity and disaster recovery. Hot site is fully configured. It has low downtime. It's an offsite facility. And it, it has common hardware and software products. It doesn't have a whole bunch of different products because hot sites cater to specific company needs. And I have to have the general hardware and software already there so the com company can easily transfer to their, to their disaster recovery site when their main site has a disaster. Documentation, 
if you studied really hard and you're a month away from the exam, you better know that documentation applies to everything in security. All domains, one through eight. Everything has to be documented. Everything needs documentation. Security awareness training needs documentation. Is there a, uh, did you just replace a router in the network from a, from a Cisco router to a Juniper router? Did the IP addresses change? documentation did did something change in the disaster recovery plan it better be documented everything just needs documentation okay one to two months away from the exam make sure you covered all the material nothing should be new if you want to confirm this open a book and point to any page and look up a term and you should know everything about it not everything but it shouldn't look strange or unfamiliar okay let's go to the next slide PDF notes and mind maps. 